have mercy upon me. The Lord have mercy towards these people who are before me. I cannot do them any more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Identifying, we began with spirit of prophecy. 
And we saw in Deuteronomy 22 that a true prophet leads people to God. A true prophet glorifies God. We analyzed Ellen White as 1 John 4 1 says, test every spirit because there are false prophets in the world. And she says that her writings are lesser light and the Bible is greater light. So therefore, she passes that test. We moved on and we spoke about what? Walking dead. That there are people who are breathing and moving, but because they have no relationship with Christ, they are actually what? Dead. We spoke about the second coming. And we spoke about the state of the dead. And yesterday night we spoke about the Sabbath. That it is not only on this day that we are supposed to worship. It is not only on this day that we are supposed to dress modestly. It is not only on this day that we are to take our Bibles or pray. But the Sabbath is a spiritual climax. It is the climax of spiritual worship. The Sabbath is not for lazy people. It is for people who have worked for six days and rest on the Sabbath. There was something that we spoke about, the state of the dead, and we spoke on spiritualism. There was something that I did not mention. And God <laughs> convicted me when I was preaching at that time that I did not put this. But perhaps God wanted someone here to listen to, listen to this before we proceed. Ellen White, in last day's event, chapter 6, says, Among the what? Now I need you to pay attention to the words in red. I didn't highlight them because I just feel like putting color on the power. Among the most dangerous resorts for pleasure is the what? Yeah. Instead of being a school of morality and virtue, as is so often claimed, meaning people say that you learn many things from watching secular movies, she says it is the very hotbed of immorality. Vicious habits and sinful propensities are strengthened and confirmed by these what? <laughs> Low songs, new gestures, expressions, and attitudes deprave the imagination and debase the what? The morals. Every youth, not some, every youth who habitually attends such exhibitions will be corrupted in principle. She does not say they might or there's a possibility. You will be corrupted in principle. There is no influence in our land more powerful to poison the imagination, to destroy religious impressions, and to blunt the relish for the tranquil pleasures and sober what? Realities of life. Then theoretical amusements. The love for these scenes increases with every indulgence as the desire for what? Intoxicating drink strengthens with its use. There are times we come to church, we listen to God's word, but we find it difficult to apply God's word. She says that entertainment deprives the mind. And we no longer longer for spiritual things, but it leads us to desire for carnal things. She goes on to say the blessing of God would not be invoked upon the hours spent at the theater or in the dance. The time you spend watching secular things, God has not blessed or he cannot bless it. No Christian would wish to meet death in such a place. No one would wish to be found there when Christ was. The only safe amusements are such as who will not banish what? Serious and religious thoughts. Anything you do in which you can take Christ, anything you do in which you can pray before you engage in, that is the right thing to do. Whatever you are about to do and you cannot pray, don't think about it. One thing comes to mind. There's something the church is struggling with, premarital sex. How many young people that have premarital sex pray before they engage? Would you even think of doing such a thing? When you watch secular movies, do you pray before you watch? When you go to the theater, do you do that? No, because inside, you know it's not right. So you don't do that. Throughout this week, I have not spoken to you. If you leave this place, if we close the crusade, and you leave saying that I spoke, you have missed the point. I have 
not spoken to you. Huh? God has spoken to you. The only person that has been glorified in these meetings is God himself. It is Jesus Christ. And he is the center and the focus of everything. If you feel blessed throughout this week, it was not me. It could not have been me. But it was Jesus who has blessed you and spoken to you. If you have learned anything, and I believe you have, it has not been me. I cannot do that, but it is God who works. Who wants to change? Who wants to change? Everybody raises their hands up. Who wants to change? Did you get it? Did you get it? Who wants change? Everybody wants change. We're tired of life. We're tired of how things are done. But who wants to what? Change. The title of today's sermon is Conversion. What is conversion? The key text in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that those who are in Christ become new creation and the old things are what? Are done away with. So when you are converted, you become new, you become fresh. It is like you are being born again. Conversion is a new life. Conversion is another chance. Conversion is a rebirth. It is being born again. Conversion is a better hope. Conversion is a new beginning with God. And everyone in this room, including me, we need this. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Who has not sinned in this room? Certainly not me. I have. Now if you have, the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. death. And by the way, it is eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And that gift is through Jesus Christ. And in order for you to experience this new birth, new life, to experience a change or a chance, to experience a better hope and a new beginning, you must go through conversion. In John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus speaking to Nicodemus says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be what? Born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are born again, you cannot spend eternity with God. Now Nicodemus heard this and said, what do you mean? Must I enter my mother's womb again? Jesus was talking about spiritual birth. This is why there are some people who eat, they move, they talk, but they are actually dead because they have not been born spiritually. So conversion is a rebirth. First John chapter 5, 1 says, Whoever believeth that Jesus is the what? Christ is what? Born of God. And everyone that loveth him, loveth God, that begot, loveth him also that is what? Begotten of him. Conversion is a new life. Jesus said in John 6 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall what? Live forever. And the bread that I will give is what? Is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the what? Of the world. That is why the problem some people are afraid of death. Death is not a problem. Because if you die in Christ, you will live again. Some people are scared when they hear of natural disasters, of typhoon. Typhoon or earthquake or tsunami is not the real problem. If you die because of a typhoon and you have Jesus Christ in you, you will rise again. But if you die without Christ because of an earthquake, or a typhoon, then you have a problem. So the problem is not trials or difficulties. The problem of the world is unconvertedness. It is not having Jesus in us. Conversion is a new life. Now this is John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the what? The life. So Jesus himself 
himself is life. He is the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by who? By me, that is through him. And Acts 2.21 says that the only person to whom we must be saved is Jesus Christ. It is not by good works. Just because I preach does not mean I have a way guaranteed to heaven. Just because you give to the poor or give tithe or you're involved in ministry does not mean that automatically you are saved. Conversion is another chance. Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be what? Found. Go ye upon him while he is what? Yeah. There will be a time when you will call upon the Lord and he will not be there. There will be a time when he will not be near. When it is final and the cases are decided in heaven. Therefore, we must call upon the Lord now while he is near, while he may be found. And God wants to give us another chance. Isaiah 55 verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his what? His way. And the unrighteous man his what? His thoughts. And let him turn, return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will what? Abundantly pardon. When you have difficulties, when you have trials, the worst thing you can do in your life is run away from God. That's the worst thing. God, as the pastor has said, God is not intimidated by your mess. He's not scared of your mess, of your sin. He's not scared. And He can abundantly pardon. He is waiting to relieve us. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, Paul says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Conversion is another chance to die to self. And conversion is experienced daily. Repentance is daily. Every morning when you wake up, you must go down on your knees and again rededicate yourself to the Lord. Every morning you must die to self. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us. As it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on the tree. The death that Christ died is the worst death. You watch movies of Christ's crucifixion. That's nothing. When they used to crucify you, you were to be naked. This is the Son of God who allowed himself to die. By the way, they spat on his face twice. For he that is dead is free from what? Sin. When you accept Jesus Christ, the Bible says we die with him. And all things become new. You resurrect with him. When you are converted, you are no longer a sinner. Some people say, we are all sinners. I am a sinner anyway. I am not perfect. When you say that, you are saying that the blood of Jesus has no power. Yes, you are a sinner. But you are not an ordinary sinner. You are a sinner saved by grace. A sinner has no hope. He has no chance. He has no, no future. He is doomed. But one who has accepted Jesus Christ is a sinner saved by grace. For he that is dead is free from what? Sin. He who has died with Christ is free from sin. You no longer sin intentionally, but you sin unintentionally. You hate sin. And if, not when, if you sin, that sin will hurt you. It will disturb you. And at times you will weep. That is a sin of genuine conversion. Now, we can all die in Christ because the wages of sin is what? Is death. Now, Jesus came and died. Now, we can die through him. Through his death, we take part. So, conversion is another chance to die to self. How do we do that? Acts 2.37, after Peter, after the church had received the Holy Spirit, now, after Jesus had left, in verse 4 of Acts 1, Jesus says, But wait in Jerusalem, do not depart from Jerusalem. And in verse 8, 
Jesus said, but ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come what? Upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Samaria, and Judea. And when they received this power, the Holy Spirit, Peter stood up to preach through the Spirit. And when he preached the gospel, people were convicted. And the Bible says that when they heard this, meaning when they heard the gospel, they were pricked in their hearts. They were convicted. And I know during this week, you were all pricked in your heart. I know that God convicted you. And now what is next? And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we what? Do believing in Jesus is not enough. Knowing that he is king is not enough. The demons know that. The devil himself knows that. So we have to submit. So they were convicted by the word and they asked, What shall we do? You. It is another chance to act. And this is Peter's response. Then Peter said unto them, what? Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of who? Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, for the forgiveness of your sins, and ye shall receive the what? The gift of the Holy what? Spirit. No person can be saved unless they repent, unless they recognize they have sinned. God is not the one at fault. God is not the one who brought sin. If we are suffering, it is not because of God, but it is because of me. I have done this. You repent. You confess. And after you've done that, you are baptized. Every one of you for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the what? The Holy Spirit. Conversion is another chance to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and what? And today and forever. In other words, Jesus does not change. If Jesus has told you, I will be with you, he will be with you. He will not betray you like some of us do. Conversion is another chance to trust. Some of us have trusted the wrong people. And as a result of that, we have been badly hurt. I have experienced that. And this is why Jesus offers us a new chance to trust. And in Jesus, you can trust. We must look unto Jesus and not men. This means that your pastor and your elder is Jesus Christ. Some of us go to church for the wrong reasons. We go to the preacher. We don't go to worship God. Some of us go to church to see our boyfriends and girlfriends. Some of us go to church because when we were born, that's what we used to do. And some of us go to church because if we don't go, we'll stay home alone. Everyone goes to church. But we are to accept Jesus because we love him. And we are to come to church to worship God. When we see Jesus as our pastor and as our elder, we will not be disappointed because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is what? Common to man. Sometimes we feel that we are the only ones facing difficulties. We feel that we're the only ones suffering. We're the only ones failing in class. We feel we're the only ones mistreated at home. Our brothers are treated well, but we are not. Well, this verse says, there are no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. We are all tempted. But God is what? Now, I need you to remember that that's the main message of this text. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye what? Are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear. This verse excites me. There was a time I was going through something very difficult, and I came across this text, and I saw something I had never seen before. First thing you must know is that God is faithful. And the verse says, God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can but bear. So if anything comes your way, a problem or anything, 
Remember that God has already measured it and has seen that you can bear it. And so he lets it come to you because he is faithful. The next thing, it says that, but he will, but will, with the temptation, also make a what? A way of escape. That ye may be able to what? To bear it. <laughs> this is strange. A way of escape, escape is to leave. Right? So you would think what God is saying is when the temptation comes, God will open a way for you to run away. Well, the next part says that ye may be able to what? Bear. To bear. Bear means to stand firm. It is not to run away. So in other words, God will not remove the temptation. Instead, God will make you a bigger problem for your problem. You understand? Yeah. Now you remember Daniel and his three friends. They were placed in the fire. And it was made ten times hotter. When they placed them inside there, what happened? Nothing happened. Not even their hair burned. Because God measured them. And what God did is, he made them hotter than the fire. You understand? Conversion is another chance to commit. To commit to God because God is faithful. Prayer and reading daily, that is what it takes. Every day we must submit ourselves to God. If you leave your home and you have not prayed, you are in big trouble. Salvation is another chance to commit through prayer. No person can survive without prayer. Even Jesus used to spend the whole time praying. This is a picture of a boy during World War. And during the World War, everything was in chaos. And he had an old shoe that he was walking with. And that shoe had holes. And so he was very disappointed. But as the war ended, somebody saw him and bought a new pair of shoes. And as soon as he received them, he just looked up and he was rejoicing. Conversion is a matter of hope in Jesus Christ. Jesus will offer us something new and something perfect. Psalm 69, 13. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy. Hear me in the truth of thy what? Salvation. Salvation. It is only in God where we can find a better hope. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee. I have no one else, and there is no one else, and there is no other hope except in Jesus Christ. Romans 4.21 says, And being fully persuaded, being, being convinced, being firm, that what he has what? Promised. He was able also to what? To perform. Meaning that what Jesus promised you, he will keep it. So conversion is a better hope. You can hope in Christ because Jesus Christ will always be there. Jesus is never late. He is always on time. Mark 16, 16 says, He that what? Believeth and is what? Baptized shall be what? But he that believeth not shall be what? Shall be damned. In other words, shall be condemned. So if you have truly believed, it leads you to what? Baptism. And after you have done that, you are what? Saved. But if you have not believed, then you are not baptized. And if you are not baptized, you shall be what? Condemned. Now what is baptism? Baptism is a new life. And that is what conversion offers. Now the word baptism in Greek, this term that we read in Mark 16 means baptisto. And baptisto means to dip. Not to splash. But it means to what? To dip. So baptism means to be merged in water. Not to be thrown with water. There are two types of baptism. That is by water for the forgiveness of your sins. You find that in Matthew 3, 11 and Acts 19. And the second is the baptism of the what? The Holy Spirit. And this power and strength is received 
daily. This is received once, but once you are baptized by water, you are to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And this happens daily. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore, we are buried with Him. This is Jesus by what? By what? Baptism. By baptism. Into what? Death. So baptism symbolizes what? Death. Buried. So this means that baptism is to be buried huh? and to be what? Risen. That like as Christ was what? Raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in what? Newness of what? Life. So baptism is symbolic. It symbolizes dying like Christ died and resurrected. This is why baptism means to be dipped in water. If you have not been baptized this way, then you have not been baptized at all. The Greek word for baptism means to dip, to be merged in water, to go down as Christ died, and then to come up in newness of life. Now what happens? Verse 5 says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, in the likeness of Jesus' death, he went down, we shall also be in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. Resurrection. That's baptism. You were lifted. What happens is this. When you go down, your sin, your mistakes, everything that you have done wrong is left in the water. And when they bring you up, you come in newness of life. So conversion is a new life. Romans 6, 6 says, knowing this, what we have just read, that our old man is what? Crucified with him, our sinful man, that the body of sin might be what? Destroyed. When you go down, that body of sin is destroyed. And when you come up, that as for we should serve, we shall not serve what? Sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Conversion is a new life. Verse 8, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also what? Live with him. As Jesus died and resurrected, everyone who believes in him and claims him, though you die, you will live again. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. And that is the same of those who accept Christ. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto what? Amen. Unto God. So when you are converted, your sinful life is gone away. And you begin a new life with God. So you cannot mistake to understand that conversion is a new life. And this is true. When God has forgiven you, the only person that can remember your sins is you. Because God doesn't remember them anymore. The Bible says he stows them away. So far, conversion is a new beginning with God. Mark 8, 38 says, Whoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this what? Adulterous and sinful generation. Of him also shall the Son of Man be what? Ashamed. When he cometh in the glory of his Father with the Holy what? Angels. If you are embarrassed today to stand for Jesus, to confess him and accept him, in that last day, Jesus will also reject you in front of the Father. Now we are nearing the end. Exodus 23 verse 2 says, Thou shalt not follow the what? To do, neither shall thou speak the cause to what? To be tried after many to what? To rest judgment. Some of us, instead of following God, we follow people. Instead of listening to God's word, we listen to people. And when appeals are made, some of us stand up because others have stood up. The things we do, some of us are even taking courses, not that we want to do, but our parents want us to do, and that our friends want us to do. The Bible says, do not follow a multitude. 
but do what God tells you to do. Salvation is what? Individual. Nobody will enter the kingdom of heaven in couples. You will not enter by two, but salvation is what? Salvation is a new beginning with God. Second Corinthians 6 2 says, For he said, I have heard of thee in the time of salvation, and in the day of salvation have I what? So for thee. Behold, pay attention to the words in Kali. Now, not tomorrow, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of what? Salvation. Deuteronomy 30, 15, Moses speaking to the Israelites before he is about to die in ambush, he says, See, I have set before thee this day what? Life and what? Good. Good. And death and what? Evil. Evil. See, throughout this week, I have set before you life and good. I have set before you death and evil. Choose for yourself what you want. As I told you from the beginning, God knows the paths we take, and God knows where those paths will lead us. But God does not force anyone. He will tell you this leads to life, and this leads to death. It is up to you. Choose what you want. As we close, I need you to watch this video. Just press the link. Get ready to pause. You can pause. Are we making way? No, I don't want to. Do you see this person here? Yes. Press the A, please. This is a person. Press pause, please. This person, I don't know what he faced. I don't know what he went through. I don't know his trials. I don't know his problems or difficulties. But he came to a point in his life where he could not bear it anymore. And so he climbed up here to commit suicide. This happened in Brazil. And he wants to jump. Please continue. And people have come together with a trampoline. Can you pause? And what they are doing is they have placed the trampoline just below where he's standing. So that when he jumps, they can what? They can catch him. I have not come here to entertain you. I'm not an entertainer. And I don't preach because I woke up and said I want to preach. What I tell you comes from God, not from me. And what they have done is what I have come to do for you. I have come to offer you a chance with Christ. Now it is up to you to fall on that trombone or to make your own choice. As Moses said in Deuteronomy, I have said before you good and life, death, and evil. You can continue. As they were waiting for him to catch him, observe him, he's standing just below them. He's, he's trying to stand up, he's running, and he jumped. You can take the video. They came to save him up. Huh? They don't know him, probably. They don't owe him anything. They have probably not even seen him at all. They came to offer him a way. Are you listening? They came to offer him a way. He looked at the option. And he said, no, I want to die. Let me tell you, there are people in the church who are doing the same thing. They are committing spiritual suicide. You know what is right, but you choose to do what is wrong. Christ has offered a way of salvation. And I have told you that if you are not saved, if you do not make it to the kingdom to spend eternity with God, it is because you did not want to. Because Christ has made it possible. So if you are not saved, it is because you don't want to. He has offered a way. So Moses says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven. 
and the earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you what? Life and what? Death. Blessing and what? Curse and cursing. Therefore, what does he say? Choose life. So he says there is life and there is death. There is good and there is evil. It is up to you to choose. And then he says, by the way, I want you to choose life. How can you miss this? This is why if you are not saved, it is because you didn't want to. Because he tells you he's good and evil, the best is good. He goes on to say that thou mayest what? Love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest what? Cleave, that thou mayest hold on unto him. If you look at Genesis, it says a uh, 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 man will leave his mother and father and shall cleave unto his wife, unto his wife. That shows relationship. So what God wants with us is a relationship. To cleave unto him, for he is thy what? Life. Thy life. And the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the what? The in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers. fathers. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Finally, Joshua in chapter 24, 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to what? Serve the Lord. Choose you this day. Choose today. Whom you will what? Serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were what? On the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve who? The Lord. The Lord. So brothers and sisters, I'm done preaching. Who will you choose? Knowing about Jesus and salvation does not change anything. You must make the choice. Conversion is the only way. Accepting Christ is the only way. Conversion is a rebirth. Conversion is a new life. Conversion is a better hope through Jesus Christ. Conversion is a new beginning of God. Conversion is another chance. Such is going to sing a song for us. And as she sings, I want you to feel and ponder on the words of the song. Hmm? I want you to think on the words of the song. And as she sings, I want you to analyze your life. And I want you to ponder on the word that you have heard today. I want you to ponder on the words that you have heard today. Thank you. 
here who is not yet baptized and would like to accept Jesus Christ. And there is no one here who does not need more Bible study. I'll repeat the last time. Hmm? Don't take this as pressure. But I have to do this. Alright? If you have understood and you have not been baptized, come on my right. Hmm? Now, if you want Bible study, you want to learn the Word of God more, come on my left. Do not look around you. People cannot save you. Huh? Do not look around you. If God has convicted you, and I believe he has, come up front so that I may offer a prayer for you. If you want another chance, do not look at people, I repeat. Do not look at people. Eyes closed, everybody. Eyes closed. Everybody please, eyes closed before you pray. Eyes closed, hands bowed. Eyes closed. I repeat, those who want to be baptized, come on my right. Those who want Bible study, come on my left. This is the last call I will make before I pray. Thank you. 